led us one way or the other. Those who brought the power of God down through song, worship, praises, prayers, everything that you have done today, God has already noticed your efforts and your contribution. And you will not miss your reward in Jesus' name. And for every one of us who have come here today with great expectation, I want you to know that you are not going to go back home empty-handed. Today is our Palm Sunday and it's also our Thanksgiving Day. So I welcome you once again. Palm Sunday, our day of hope and triumph. Palm Sunday, our day of hope and triumph. Yes, this year's celebration is quite different. We all know that. It's quite different. And why? It's different because we are unable to meet together in a local church with our local families. Everyone is staying at home and we are looking at ourselves through the screen of, of an instrument, maybe iPad, maybe laptop, maybe our telephone. We know that normally we would have gathered together as the family of God to celebrate Ham Sunday. But let me assure you, let me assure you that churches' plans may be altered. The plan of churches may be altered. But God's plan can never be overturned. His plan for your life, His plan for my life, His plan for your family, His plan for my family can never ever be overturned. Nothing can overturn it. While God is not the author of evils, God is not the author of evils, such as we are seeing now in the world. God is not the author. But God tells us in Romans, in chapter 8 of Romans, and in verse 28, God tells us that he walks through all things for our good. So I know that God is walking through all this COVID-19 and everything that is going on in the world for our good. And I know that God has a plan for you. I said I know that God has a plan for you, for your family, for your children, for your grandchildren. As we celebrate Palm Sunday from our different homes. I know that God has a plan for you. Let us pray. Father, because these your children have come here today, irrespective of the fact that we cannot gather together as a local family in our local church, I decree that this week shall be glorious for them. It shall be a glorious week for them. Heaven will open up for them this week. And God shall deliver sweetness into your life. God Almighty, that sent His Son Jesus Christ, who came in all humility to live with us as ordinary human beings, that same God will deliver sweetness into your life today in the mighty name of Jesus. In your business, in your health, in your marriage, 
in your finances, in your projects, whatever projects you are embarking upon right now, in your ministry, in the church, in the kingdom of God, you are going to encounter unusual grace and you will experience mouth-watering testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, as we celebrate Jesus Christ, God Almighty will give you reason for a celebration. I say you will have a reason for a celebration in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, I welcome you. Today, today we are celebrating what is known all over the world as Palm Sunday. All over the world as Palm Sunday. I told you that the service today is Palm Sunday. Our hope our hope for a triumphant celebration. Palm Sunday, our hope for a triumphant celebration. So what is Palm Sunday? I'm going to explain to you quickly. Palm Sunday it's a time to praise God. It's a time to praise God. In Gospel of John, chapter 12, and in verse 12, Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 12, the Bible says, on the next day, much people that were come to the feast. I want you to take note. The feast. When they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. You see, on Palm Sunday like this, over 2,000 years ago, men and women spread palm branches on the floor for Jesus to ride on. And as he went, they worshipped him. They worshipped him. They were shouting, Hosanna. They were shouting, Hosanna. They worshipped him. Now, this was the record of what happened on that day. They were shouting, Hosanna. Jesus Christ was riding on the back of a donkey. You can even hear one of those people that responded in the short clip that we watched said a, 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 a big, a big uh, a prophet of God riding on the back of a donkey. Can you see humility? In those days, there were horses. In those days, there were chariots. But Jesus Christ chose to ride on the back of a donkey. So that we can learn humility from him. So that we can learn service from him. So that we can learn from him that in anything that we do, we must make sure that our humility exceeds the humility of the Gentiles that are around us, unbelievers that are around us. 
Our moderation must be seen, it must be known. He rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Yes, the people laid down their garment, palm branches, they were shouting, Hosanna. What is the meaning of Hosanna? Hosanna means save now. That, that was what they were saying. Save now. Save now. You see, this enthusiastic crowd were anxious to welcome a king. And their plan was that this king would overthrow Rome. That was their intention. That this king would overthrow Rome and put an end to the empire's occupation of Israel. But that was not the plan of Jesus. That was not the plan of God. That was not the reason God sent Jesus. Jesus Christ had another thing in store. And what did he have in store for us? And for those people that time that they didn't even know. He had in store for us to conquer death. He was going to conquer death. And he was going to conquer the grave. So instead of saving them from an emperor, ordinary human being, he wanted to save them from their sins. He wanted to save them from their sins. They did not know that. They thought that yes, Jesus Christ has come to overthrow Rome, to overcome the emperor. Let me tell you, if you remember, if you, if you think about what I've just told you, you will know that Palm Sunday is a time for us to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that is why I was moved in the spirit when we were being led you know, in the songs, worship, hymns, very well put together because it flows very well into what we are doing today. What we are doing today is we are celebrating the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It is a time to thank God for all that he has done for us. As Jesus came into Jerusalem, everyone came out to celebrate him. I want you to notice in that passage, in verse 12, people were actually doing something. They came to the feast. They came to the feast. But when they heard that Jesus Christ was around, what did they do? They left everything. They left everything and they came out to celebrate Jesus. As you celebrate Jesus Christ today, he will celebrate you in the mighty name of Jesus. I said as you celebrate him, he will make sure that you also, you are celebrated in the mighty name of Jesus. As you worship him, and as you give him your own personal praise today, he will elevate you. I said he will elevate you. He will raise you up. God is going to bless somebody today. I said this morning, God is going to bless somebody today. No matter the burden in your heart right now, this morning, as you celebrate Jesus, that burden will be lifted off you. In the mighty name of Jesus. See, Palm Sunday is a covenant day of praise. It's a covenant day of praise. It was not initiated by man. It was initiated by God. These people were in a feast, but they could not stay there. 
They had to leave their face to come out and praise Jesus Christ and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and celebrate Him. Palm Sunday is a covenant day of praise for all of us. And as you are praising Him, He will raise you up. I said He will raise you up. This morning, God will do something good for somebody. I said, somebody, someone listening to me now, God is going to do something good for you. He's going to do something good for you. Because you have the mind to praise God. You have the mind to thank God. You have the mind to celebrate Jesus. God Almighty will do something good for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, so what is the importance of, of Palm Sunday? We may not be able to go through everything and just rush through because of time. What is the importance? You see, Palm Sunday is what gives us hope that our celebration is definitely coming. Be, if, if, the, the Palm Sunday is what leads us into all the other things that will happen this week that we have started today. Palm Sunday, therefore, is a day over 2,000 years ago that men, women, children, everybody use palm leaves, use their garment, to welcome our Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Now, by doing that, you can see that Jesus Christ was decorated. He was decorated. So, what is then the significance of the palm branches that they use? What is the significance? You know, in those days, in those days, even until recently, when I was still growing up in Africa, palm branches were used to welcome a king, to welcome a celebrity, to welcome an important person. When royal person was passing by, men will wave palm branches. They will wave palm branches. And they will place them on the floor for this person to walk on. So it is a symbol of honor and victory. Palm branches is a symbol of honor and victory. Men and women use it to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem. Over that period, over 2,000 years ago, and this morning, this morning, as we celebrate Jesus, heaven will open for you. I said heaven will open for you. As you celebrate Jesus, heaven will open for you. You see, Palm Sunday is a time to praise God for who He is, for who He is. On that Palm Sunday, that we are talking about, that is written down for us, men put palm branches on the floor and they were worshipping Jesus Christ. So, likewise, we have come today to this platform to praise God for who He is. For who He is. And that's why the last psalm the last psalm, and that's Psalm 150. Psalm 150. The whole verses 1 to 6 of the last psalm, Psalm 150, tells us, he says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. 
Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Can you see that? So we should not only praise God because he has done something for us. We should always praise him because of who he is. Because of who he is. And this morning, as you celebrate Jesus, there is a breakthrough coming to you. I said a breakthrough is coming to somebody now. It is coming your way as you celebrate Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. There is healing now and deliverance that is coming the way of somebody as you are celebrating Jesus Christ today. There are open doors that are coming your way now as you are celebrating Jesus Christ. If you are that person, you, you better let your amen be so loud that everybody will know that I'm talking about you. If you can just turn your eyes from what you are passing through right now, turn your eyes away from it. And focus on giving God your own praise. Focus on giving God your own praise. I can assure you that if you do that, your testimony will be delivered into your hand this morning. Look away from that problem. Look away from those challenges. Focus your heart. Focus your mind on praising God. On praising Jesus today. And I can assure you that your testimony will be delivered into your hands. And if you believe what I'm saying to you, let your amen be so loud. Let everybody hear you. Let the person in the next room hear you. Don't close your mouth. Don't close your mouth. You have to agree with what I'm telling you for it to work in your life, for it to work in your family. There is power in praising God. There is power in praising God. There is a power that opens doors. When everything else has failed, when everything else has failed, there is power in praising God. And it is that power that opens the door when people thought that door can never be opened again. You see, men and women, people generally, who know how to praise God can never be reduced in their life. They can never be reduced. They can never be reduced. It doesn't matter how it's looking now. It doesn't matter if they have such a little thing and they are using it to praise God, to thank God. I can assure you, they can never be reduced in life because they will continue to go up because God loves people that do that for Him. Those people who know how to praise God can never lose their value in life. They can never lose their value in life. You see, men and women who know how to praise God can never be belittled. They can never be belittled by the challenges of life. Challenges of life can never be little them. So, do you desire a common breakthrough today? Do you desire uncommon breakthrough today? My advice is this. Be a man and a woman of praises to God. Be a man and a woman of praises to God. So this morning, as you begin to give God your palm branches of praises, whatever it takes for uncommon breakthrough to manifest in your life, God shall deliver it into your hands. You will experience it in your family. I say you will experience it in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is a time to praise God. The, the, the gospel of John that I read to you earlier on in verse 12 and 13 tells us that 
those people they were praising God with everything that they had. If they were they couldn't they couldn't get palm branches, they they took off their garments and they were putting it on the on, on, on the way so that Jesus Christ can ride on it. Beloved, my brothers, my sisters, my friends, those of you listening to me now, the key that we open the rest of the blessings of this year for you is praises to God. Is praises to God. You see, when those people heard that Jesus Christ was coming, every man, every woman left their houses and they came to celebrate Jesus. They left their troubles. They came to celebrate Jesus. They forgot about their challenges. They forgot about their sicknesses. They forgot about their issues. And they came to celebrate Jesus. If you can praise God, I said, if you can praise God for all the things that you are expecting that you have not even received yet, that you are expecting, the lifting that you are expecting, the blessing that you are expecting, the support that you are expecting, the open doors that you are expecting, the breakthrough that you are expecting, the healing that you are expecting, the deliverance that you are expecting. The provisions that you're expecting, the protection that you're expecting, the abundance that you're expecting, the forgiveness, the mercy that you're expecting, the kindness that you're expecting, the connections that you're expecting, God will open more doors for you. I said He will open those doors for you, and He will even add more to it for you in the mighty name of Jesus. When you praise God, it will bring you an increase. When you praise God, it will always bring you an increase. In Psalm 67, verse 5 and, and 6, the Bible says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. That's Psalm 67, verse 5 and 6. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God... Even our own God shall bless us. So one reason why many are not seeing the best of God on earth is because they do not know how to praise God. Praise unlocks the increase of the earth. I say your praise will unlock the increase of the earth. When things are difficult, praise Him. When the road seems to be closed, praise him. You remember the story of Paul and Silas? We have no time to read it. It's in Acts of Apostles, chapter 16, verse 25 and 26. You can read it at your own time. See? When things were tall, they praised God. And as they were praising God, there was an earthquake. And the chains of the enemy in their life was broken. This morning, as you give God your palm branches of praise, every chase the enemy has used to bind you shall break in the mighty name of Jesus. God will give you a breakthrough that will make your testimony an encouragement to other people. God will visit you in such a way with a new miracle. Maybe you have been having miracles before, but God will visit you with a new miracle that will roll away all the bad, the bad past memories that you have right now. God will give you a miracle that will roll them away. He will do it for you today in the mighty name of Jesus. As you begin to give God praises on this Palm Sunday, those that the devil have been using to frustrate you will come and bow before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I command a release of the anointing upon you right now to cancel every frustration in your life, in your family, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will turn around your captivity. Wherever you have been experiencing sorrow, the Lord will give you joy. I said this morning, the Lord will do great things in your life. He will fill your mouth with laughter in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Today, this Palm Sunday, a time to praise God for what He has done. A time to praise God for what He has done. So, what have you seen God doing in your life? What are you expecting God to do in your life? It is time to praise God for them. And as you praise Him, God will do more in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, you have heard the word of God. The Palm Sunday is a time to remember the goodness of God in the land of the living. It does not matter now how many challenges you are passing through right now. I want you to look very well. You will see reasons to still thank God. You may not have brought a house. Maybe you are expecting to, you want to buy a house. You have not, you may not have bought a house yet. You may not have had that baby yet. You may not have had that husband or that wife yet. You may not have got that job that you have been looking for yet. But I want you to know that God has been good to you. He has been good to you. And you need to praise him so that he can raise you up. So that he, he can raise you up. If you thank him, he will bless you. I said if you thank God, God will bless you. If you honor him, he will lift you. He will lift you up. If you can praise God in your challenge, he will turn that challenge into a testimony for you. I said in the challenge or challenges you are facing now, if you can praise God, if you can thank God in it, it will turn those challenges to a testimony for you. God is going to lift up somebody now. I say God is going to lift up someone now in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are that person, let your amen be the loudest. I said if you are that person, let your amen be the loudest. I prophesy that after today's service, your heavens will open again. I say your heaven will open again. If you can praise God for what he has done, God will make you laugh again. God will make you laugh again. Laughter is coming back into that your mouth again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever sorrow followed you here today, because you have come to the presence of God Almighty, I said you will laugh. You will laugh again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your sorrow shall be turned to joy. Your sorrow shall be turned to joy. Whatever it is that is giving you sleepless night shall be taken away from you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will intervene in that matter and he will bring an end to that sorrow in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy now that God will do a new thing in your life that will change your life and that will increase you. In Jesus' name, Amen.